Welcome back to Access Daily. Our next guest is a TikTok historian who specializes in two of my favorite things, L.A. and Poof. Please welcome back my guy, Evan Lovett. What's up, man? Mario. Good to see you. Great to see you again. I appreciate it. I was very serious about it. I do love history, and, and obviously uh, I love food. I'm constantly eating here. And remember. we know people who, who love food, and they would be so interested in the history behind some of their favorite restaurants. Are you getting more engagement from a younger audience or an older audience? What a great question. So initially, my wife's younger cousins used to kind of poke fun at me because they said, I didn't know there were that many old people on TikTok, <laughs> as far as the comments and things. <laughs> now, by old people, they meant my age. Right, right, so right. I was a little like, whoa. But <laughs> recently, as I've kind of grown, Ellie in a minute now is 140,000 followers between TikTok and Instagram. I see more high school students, college students saying, I'm learning more from you than yeah. I learned in my classes. So I kind of think that food is one of those things that appeals to all demographics, all ages. People Absolutely. just love it, yeah. I agree. All right, so what's the first restaurant we're learning about today? So the first restaurant is LA's own King Taco. Oh, I love me the King Taco. Is the original one in East LA? No, that it's is the second one. The first one is in Cypress King Park. Taco. Oh, in Cypress Park, so, okay. And it's a great story. So in 1969, Raul and Lupe Martinez yes. immigrated from Mexico City with only 12 pesos. Really? They settled around MacArthur Park where Raul would always catch the soccer matches. Right. He had the epiphany where he said, you know what? I'm going to buy an ice cream truck. I'm going to outfit it as a restaurant on wheels and see if I could sell tacos from this ice cream truck. People thought he was crazy. Within six months, he had made enough money to open the first King Taco. Within a year, he had opened the second King Taco. We have 50,000 food trucks in the United that. States, and they have Raul Martinez to thank, as he was the first taquero, not only in Los Angeles, but the first food truck in the United States. Shout out to Raul Martinez. Yes. Now, by the way, because I've been to King Taco a lot, they don't serve them in these fancy schmancy things. Usually when you get tacos in this, you know they're going to be trash. But these are King Tacos, so I'm going to go with a little carne asada one right here. Now check this right out here. too. Carne asada is awesome, but they are actually known for their al pastor as al well. Al pastor, that's Which pork. is delicious. Pork, pineapple, Tasty. succulent, and supple. It's I amazing. I love it when they cut it off the thing like that. Yes. All right, what's our next spot? So next spot is Bob's Big Boy. Bob's Big Boy! Now Bob's... We, we learned, is, that, is the original one in Toluca Lake in Burbank? It's the oldest standing Bob's, but the original was a 10-stool uh, set up called Bob's Pantry in Glendale. Oh, now, in Glendale. Yeah. Now, that was started in 1936 by Bob wow. Weehan. Sold his car, opened Bob's Pantry, was selling hamburgers. One night, some musicians come in. They're like, we want something that's not on the menu. Quick thinking, he cut a sesame bun in thirds, put a patty and a cheese and their special relish on one side, patty cheese, the special relish on, relish on the other side, put it together. It's the first double-decker hamburger, oh, and that you, was friend. the precursor to the Big Mac. So he went straight double-decker Straight double-decker. That's the big boy. Oh, exactly. wow. And they got, oh, and he throws an extra bun. There you go. That's right. So they were the, the people who invented that. Now, one cool thing about Bob's that I love. A movie, an mm. L.A. movie. It's film noir. Michael Mann's Heat. That was my, one of my favorite movies. Hey, absolutely. 19, uh, dude. 1995. Eddie, uh, absolutely. They're going to so, make a Heat, too. I heard that. I heard that. It's yeah. Incredible. So you got De Niro, Pacino, Val Kilmer. Right. Tom Sizemore. So Danny in the Trejo, scene, yep. in the scene, they're planning the big, the big score. And uh, Danny Trejo is on the phone. He's like, I can't shake the police. Right. They're running parallels on me. I'm back. So they're in the bobs. They're in the diner. And they're looking around. And they spot Dennis Haysbert behind the line as oh, a cook. Right. Oh, that was a bob. And they oh. have to get Dennis Haysbert. I remember Hays the scene that De Niro and Pacino had. That was at Kate Manalini. Yes, that was true. In LA. So that's yeah, different. Yeah. You're something right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Well done. Right. Well done. But that was at Bob's Big Boy. So, I mean, that is an L.A. legend. Yeah. That one in Toluca Lake opened in 1949. Okay. All right. I've had tacos. I've had burgers. Let's get dessert. What's up I feel like dessert. Let's bring the last spot here. Now, we are bringing a true L.A. classic. Okay. Everybody who knows L.A. loves this spot. Porto's. Oh, Porto's. Okay. Is that L.A. really? Because I thought it was cute. It was on Miami. Thing. So good. So look, 1959, Raul and Rosa Porto right. were living in Cuba. Okay. Castro comes into power, puts Raul into a labor camp. Ooh. So Rosa had to find a way to make ends meet. What she started doing is she started uh, baking. She had a lone sunbeam mixer. She had some supplies, and she would make her awesome pastries, meat pies, things like this. And she would get the equipment and the material for bartering. It's a different economic oh, system. These are great. So for 10 years, they made oh. ends meet with the family, yes. uh, making these at their home. 1971, they finally get approved to immigrate oh. to the United States. They go to L.A., which had a strong Cuban community at the time. Yes. Right? Come to Los Angeles. What does she do? She starts baking again. 
from the apartment. She's baking these awesome, beautiful, wonderful pastries and these cakes. These are amazing. Using the kids' beds as cooling racks. Oh. And now it's a family business. Delicious. Deli that was everybody's reaction. So within five years, they were able to save enough money from her selling these pastries from, her, from their apartment to open up the first storefront in Echo Park. 19th first one was in Echo Park? First one was in Is Echo right? Park on Not Sunset wow. Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard right there in Echo Park. And now there's lines every Porto's. No all right, almost going around the block. Super lines. They're quick. They're quick. They're yes. efficient. It's a great business. Pastries are so good. But here's this why. Is so good. So the Portos, Napoleon right here. I'm getting down. To Port Portos was named the number one place to eat in the United States, and five of their six locations have been on that list over the last six years. Great place of history. Yeah. Right on, my man. Listen, Thank you. For more on Evan's Elliott a minute series, you can visit his TikTok page. Coming up, it's National Black Business Month. We're celebrating with our friend Ms. Diddy, who is highlighting some amazing businesses you should know about. Well, those are great stories.